everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and I have a lookbook for you today. Yay! <laughs> so I've been working on um, a smaller little summer capsule kind of because um, I've got some big plans. Oh sorry, hold on. My business partners decided to join me. Um, oh sorry, sorry. Um, so I've been working on kind of a smaller little capsule for summer and kind of some red, white, and blue colors. Um, I've got, I, I did my plans for the first module of that, um, I don't know, week and a half, two weeks ago maybe, and um, I'm going to be doing a second module with this color scheme as well, uh, but I'm pulling in a lot from the spring capsule into this summer capsule, which just kind of... Um, I don't know, I just kind of wanted to show how easily it is, especially if you live in a place with four seasons, to pull things, you know, those transitioning seasons, the springs and the falls, how to bring things from those transitioning, transitioning seasons into the hotter or colder seasons. So, um, module two will be, um, that plans video will either be going up on Friday or next week. I haven't decided yet because again, I've got jean stuff that needs to be going up, which I haven't filmed yet, <laughs> but um, the flies. I was gonna do the flies and then talk about how to do a flat fell seam um, on jeans too, and I will be showing you how to use a mallet. <laughs> I have a lot, of, a lot of questions about using the mallet for jeans. Um, but anyway, because again, I've got some big um, plans, I guess, for a summer going into kind of fall-ish type um, capsule. I feel like uh, when I started this channel back last August, I was kind of doing, really I've only been doing the module sewing since probably uh, March time frame this year, um, but I was kind of trying to figure out capsule sewing and that kind of thing last fall, but I feel like my style, I'm finally getting a grasp of what my style is right now. Um, you know, just like everyone, your style is ever evolving and I feel like I'm starting to finally get a grasp of what that means for me right now. Um, so I will be, I am doing a kind of a late summer, um, early fall, I guess, kind of capsule, which most of that stuff will very easily go into fall. So anyway, that's what you have to look forward to, but let's get into the lookbook for today. So for this first module, I was also talking about how um, if you decide to do a module, how easy it is to stick with a pattern company for your six or seven pieces. I've done seven pieces here because I do, like I've said, this module concept um, is very separates. Um, it, it very much goes towards separates, and I do like wearing dresses and jumpsuits, so I kind of add a seventh piece in there, um, a one piece, either a dress and or jumpsuit. Um, I also want to note that this is not my idea. The module idea is not my idea. This is from Christy Russell. I've said this a million times, but again, I'll link her stuff down below. She is a, a YouTuber um, and a personal stylist, and this is all coming from her, so this is not my original idea, but I have adapted it to the sewing world. So... <laughs> Let's, um, again, I talked about when you use one pattern company for the module for your six or seven pieces, um, and as a reminder, those pieces include one topper, like a jacket, a cardigan, some kind of a layering piece, uh, two bottoms, skirts, pants, shorts, whatever, and then three tops. And then again, I add in a one piece, like a dress and or jumpsuit. So those are, those make up the actual seven pieces for one module. Um, anyway, one module will make, well, with the one piece that I've added, 14 outfits, and then when you add in a second module of complementary colors, you can get up to, well, more than 72. 72 if you only had the six pieces, um, so a little bit more than that, but anyway, you can get a lot of outfits out of a small amount of clothing. Um, so let's talk about what I've done with this module. So again, using, I've said this like five times now, using one pattern company really helps if to nail down fitting issues. So for instance, if you know, um, you know, Vogue patterns, if you're gonna use all Vogue patterns and you know that you always have to shorten the sleeves an inch and a half or whatever, or lengthen them an inch or, you know, shorten the bodice by, you know, three quarters of an inch, whatever your standard fitting adjustments are, it makes it really easy um, fitting when you go with one pattern company. So I kind of talked about this a little bit in planning the module series that I did back in May or June, back in June, I think, <laughs> back in June, um, about just kind of streamlining the process a little bit and getting a bigger bang for your buck. So also by using um, one pattern company, 
Oh, I talked about the independent, sorry, the independent pattern companies, how a lot of times you can find some really great hacks, which will give you a bigger bang for your dollar. So for this first module, I decided to test that theory out a little bit, or just kind of not test it out, because I already knew that that was the case, but just kind of um, show how that is the case. I used all Athena Kaku patterns. Um, I think that she does a great job of offering up different hack ideas for her patterns. Um, her Shona t-shirt she think I think there's five variations in that pattern to begin with and then she has a whole hack series on her blog um, of like 21 different variations that you can make on that and I actually did one of them today uh, and then she did a her Samantha dress she did a few hacks on that as well she's a she's just a hacking queen so um, you don't even have to think up the hacks yourself it's very easy just to go um, oh, and she's not the only one that does this a lot of independent designers will do this will come up with different hacks and ways that you can change up the pattern um, to again get a bigger bang for your buck. So again I've stuck all with her patterns. I was gifted, I want to preface this, I was gifted the Rachel trousers for this little um, capsule that I'm doing. Um, I do a lot of pattern testing for Athena but I've also purchased quite a few of her uh, patterns. So usually when you pattern test for people you get the final pattern for free as a um, compensation for testing and using your own materials for testing that pattern. So I do do testing for her and so I do have some of her patterns that um, I earned that way but I have also paid for uh, quite a few of her patterns as well. But I was gifted the racial trousers for this little capsule and I think I own all of her patterns now. <laughs> um, but anyway, okay, just wanted to say that. So let's get started. All right. I'm going to talk about each of these seven pieces first, and then I'll do a montage at the end of me wearing all 14 outfits. All right, so first things first. Actually, let's do this first. Let's talk about the one piece. So, ooh, I made the Abby jumpsuit out of this rayon knit. I didn't do any hacking on this. I love this jumpsuit. It really feels like secret pajamas. I love okay, sorry about that interruption. Of course, when I sit down to film, everyone starts calling. <laughs> So again, this is the Abby jumpsuit. I did zero hacks to this. I did the cropped version. I keep hitting my lights there. Did the cropped version. I used this, oh my gosh, this rayon, this rayon knit from Smuggler's Daughter. She just no longer has it, um, which is unfortunate, but um, I think it came from Smuggler's Daughter. I tried to, when I was doing my um, plans video for this, I tried to find this fabric because I couldn't remember if I got it from Smuggler's Daughter or Stone Mountain and Daughter, but it's not available on either site now, so. <laughs> I, I don't know where this came from. Um, anyway, but it's a rayon knit, and it's a, gosh, and it's a wonderful rayon knit, and um, yeah, I mean, it just feels like, again, secret pajamas. It's got the little tie that goes around the waist, which is pretty common with Athena's patterns. Um, I love the faux wrap top. I find that very flattering. Um, yeah, I mean, it has a little bit of a linear pattern, which technically for my soft classic um, kibby body type, I shouldn't do linear patterns, but you know what? Again, I said, those are rules that are meant to be broken. <laughs> Little guidelines, kind of, you know. So I, I definitely don't, um, but the wrap is very good for the soft um, classic and the drapey knit. So however you want to do that. <laughs> but I'm loving, I'm mad at myself. I bought this pattern back, oh gosh, last fall, I think, maybe when she was having a Black Friday sale. And I just am now getting around to making it up. And I'd kind of like to kick myself because it's, just, again, so comfortable. So... That is the Abby jumpsuit, and that is my one piece for that um, little, little capsule. All right, now for the topper. This is the Nikki cardigan, and it comes in two lengths. I've made the shorter length, and I made it in this, um, it's called cashmere, but it's a rayon poly blend. Um, it's cloud knit also, it's called, it feels, it's very soft and feels like a, a hug. Um, but I've made cardigans out of this fabric before um, and knew that I liked the way that it drapes and um, the layer it provides. But this, I love this cardigan. Number one, it's it, this one, someone had asked me about, um, you know, the Blackwood cardigan is not meant to close in the front. And I think that that does bother some people. But this one is actually meant to wrap in the front. So you can wear it with or without the tie belt and, um, you'll see me wearing it both ways but it has these little belt loops that you can attach to it which I think is very um where's the other one there it is which really helps to keep that um belt in place and she even has it styled with like a regular belt like you wouldn't have to do the fabric um belt with it if you didn't want to and then I also wear it without the belt just as you know a 
throw over cardigan. Um, and again, I love this kind of stuff in the summer because, you know, when you go into anything with air conditioning, I always get really cold, like the movies or restaurants or anything like that. Um, so I love having a piece to throw on. So there is the Nikki. Again, I made the shorter version of that. And it does come in, in two versions. I'm just very much all about the shorter cardigans right now for whatever reason. <laughs> also, I hopefully I've been popping pictures up here of everything. All right, let's do bottoms next. For the first bottom, I did her newest pattern. I think this is the newest one, and this is the Adriana skirt. And I've done it in this white eyelet, and I have, I love this white eyelet. It's got the pleats that are on just one half of the skirt. That's the style of the skirt. I did version two, so this is the, not the paper bag waist version. This is just the regular hits you at your waist version. Um, I've underlined the entire skirt with white cotton lawn, but I've left the bottom, oh, three and a half inches or so without any underlining, and I love that little peek through effect right there. I did use an eyelet that is basically stripes, um, and this is not, this has a curved bottom of the hem, and, but again, it has the pleats. And so technically using up and down stripes on a skirt like that, because it's going to distort because of the way that you've got the curve at the bottom of the hem. But I really love the way that this turned out. Um, I really love the skirt and this is going to get so much wear. Now you're going to notice that my waistband looks gathered and that is because <laughs> once again, Whitney's waist uh, strikes. I put elastic into in between the facing and the um, outside waistband. I just, the fabric is pretty busy, so I literally just sewed um, the ends of the uh, elastic through all layers right here and put it in um, like a casing, like I left openings on either side when I was sewing the, the back part of the facing down and added elastic because <sighs> When I made the skirt, or when I was measuring myself for the skirt, because I have to measure myself every single time I make a pattern now, um, just because I've had so many goof ups lately when it comes to my waist measurement. And my waist measured one thing, and then I made the skirt, and it was gigantic. So I said, okay, fine. <laughs> so I put the elastic in, and that solves all the problems. So now the skirt will give and, and ebb and flow with my waistline. Again, I have autoimmune issues, and so um, I get organ swelling for, yeah, anyway, it changes my waist measurement by like three inches on any given day. So um, anyway, so there we go. There is the Adriana skirt. Again, I am in love with this. This is like quintessential summer skirt. I mean, white eyelet, you just can't get um, any more summery than that. Or broderie anglaise, I think is also what it's called. Um, and this is 100% cotton. All, not all, all the fabric. Nope, that's a lie too. Okay, <laughs> this one came from Joann's. I was gonna say all came from Joann's, but that's not true. In fact, three of the seven did not come from Joann's. And again, I will link the fabric as well down below um, if it's still available. So that's the Adriana skirt. I love this skirt patterner. I just think it's just so classic and, and just cute. Also, I need a haircut. Need a haircut very bad. I let it grow a little bit, but now it's getting too long. Our um, Soft water, um, water softener, that's what I'm trying to say, has gone on the fritz. And in Indiana, we have the hardest water in the United States here in Indiana. So not having a water softener is a real problem. So my hair just feels yucky. I just feel like I have a, a layer of like dryness and yuck on my body because it, are we have very hard water. Um, anyway, it's, it's just in my face and everything else. Okay. So the remainder of the four patterns are all hacks. So I will talk you through, two of them are my hacks and two of them I copied off Athena. Sorry. <laughs> two of them I copied off Athena and I will link obviously that down below. So for my other pair of bottoms, I made the Rachel trousers, but I cut them off into shorts. I also moved the zipper from the center back to the side and I'm gonna tell you I was gonna do a um, a lot of people asked how I do that and I was gonna film it and then I'm like this is so easy I don't need to film this 
Um, so first off, I made the, so these are high, these are hit you at your natural waist, and I originally made the inseam, so I measured down the inseam um, to give myself five inches, and then I gave myself an inch uh, hem allowance, but that was, because these are high-waisted, it was, the proportions were off, so I actually ended up shortening the leg by two inches, so this actually only has a three-inch inseam on it, but because it comes up so high on the body, I think the proportions are much better. Um, so that's what I did. I mean, I literally just chopped it off uh, where I wanted it for the shorts. Now, moving the zipper from center back to the side, I didn't do anything to the pattern at all. I literally just sewed the zipper into the side seam as opposed to the back seam. Now, this changes the... Um, order of how you sew a little bit. So basically, and if you want to jot down notes, all I did was I decided I wanted mine on the right side of my body and you could put it on either side, whatever you're most comfortable with. Um, so for my left leg, I went ahead and sewed my out seam and my in seam um, together just for the left leg. Sorry, I even put drops in today to help with my dry eyes. Help for a little bit. So I completely sewed up the left leg. Then on the right leg, I just sewed the inseam together. Then I was able to put them right sides together and sew the crotch from the front to the back, one fell swoop, surged all of that and everything else. So now the shorts are completely assembled except you're completely open on the right side in my case because that's where I wanted to put the zip. Um, all the pockets are in at this point and everything else. Then I put my waistband on all the way around, and I kept the waistband the same. The notches don't line up because again, instead of starting and stopping at the center back, you're starting and stopping at the side. Um, but I mean, it still fits just fine. Uh, put in the waistband, then I put the invisible zip in, then I closed up the rest of the side seam, and then I put the facing on, just like you would for the back of the shorts. The, it's the same, the inserting of the zipper is the same um, for the side as it would be if you were putting it into the back. So that's all I did. Super easy. You're still only using the same amount of seam allowance. Um, very cute. And again, I use this, it's a cotton twill, but it's like a brushed cotton twill. And there is stretch in this, so I didn't have to do anything to the waistband because it does give, um, there is some stretch there for my fluctuating waistband. Um, also, I hate invisible, I don't hate invisible zippers. I use invisible zippers. I think they have a place, but I get so frustrated with them on pants, especially when they go up through a waistband. I just find they just don't like it, and then they end up splitting and everything gets crazy. So I actually, instead of fighting it, I just don't zip it through. I could have stopped the zipper there, but it was already in. So I just don't, I only zip it up to here, and I've put hook and eyes there. So I hook and eye it shut, and then I zip it up and everything is good to go and I don't have to worry about busting my invisible zipper. So that is how I turned my Rachel trousers into shorts and I think they're very cute and very comfortable and they're gonna get a lot of wear this summer. All right, the tops. For my first top, and this is another very simple hack, I made the Lisa dress and all I did was I cut this is the skirt of the Lisa dress. You can kind of see the seam there. I just um, cut it off. I think I gave myself a six inch drop. So basically it's kind of a peplum top now. The Lisa does not have, it's more of an A-line skirt. It's not a very full skirt like the Kimberly. Although you could put the Kimberly skirt on this too and have a fuller peplum if you wanted. But I wanted something that would be easy to tuck in as well. So that's all I did. I just cut the skirt off at six inches, um, attached it. I used this wonderful rayon. Um, and I used facings. I didn't line it. Uh, it's got the tie belt again to wear with or without. Um, did an all-in-one armhole neckline facing just like her instructions. But yeah, other than that, this is the Lisa dress. And um, yeah, I just cut the skirt off at six inches to make it into a top, which is very easy. And I think it's very flattering and very summery. And again, the Lisa has... Um, like a little tie you could put at the top, which would be very easy to do with this top, and it's got a little frill that you could put around the top of the um, the cap of your of your sleeve if you wanted to. Uh, again, I don't like to showcase that part of my body, so I probably will never do that, but um, it's very cute if, if you're into that kind of thing. So yes, and this is from Joann's, the Crinkle Rayon. It's actually the same base that I'm wearing, just a different, well, 
actually the same um, collection, but obviously different patterns. All right, and then these last two tops are hacks from her blog, and I will link to both hacks. So the first one, I use this cotton jersey, and it is the Samantha dress that is hacked off into a top with this like faux tie. This tie actually doesn't even work. I mean, it's just, it's been sewn, you know, it's just been sewn right there. And so it just ties, it's decorative. <laughs> And I just really just used the tie belt and just basically made a band for the bottom. Um, I did lengthen this, I think, by two inches. I kind of wish I had either kept it as is and kept it as a crop. And I say crop. It still would have, you know, covered my stomach. Or I would lengthened it a few more inches. Um, it kind of hits at a weird spot. But, you know, it's really comfortable. I love this beefy jersey. Again, it came from Joann's. Um... And I find it a very comfortable shirt, so it will get worn. But yeah, I think I would... I'm gonna... <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I think I would definitely um, either take the two inches out or lengthen it by maybe two more inches for a total of like four. But yeah, it's a very cute little wrap top. And again, that's one of her hacks. And I will leave a, um, a link down below for that... Um, on her blog, that hack on her blog. And then finally is my Shona. And I all I did on this one was alter the front neck to make it more of like a boat neck style. And again, this is a hack that's on her blog. I will leave a link to that also down below. Um, but I just wanted something a little different from the regular um, Shonas that I have made. I love this top, it's not too fitted, um, but it still you know hugs your figure a little bit. Uh, I kind of wish I would have dropped the front just a hair. I think I took it up a little too um, high, and I kind of wish I would have scooped out, changed the back as well, and maybe come out just like an inch on the shoulders a little bit to give it a little bit more of a boat neck. But again, I, I mean, it's fine the way it is. It's just if I make it again um, with that um, alteration, I will probably change that a little bit. So, yeah. I mean, it's a Breton style top. Like, you can't go wrong with the navy and white. This is an art gallery fabric. It is, um, I got this one from Stone Mountain and Daughter. And um, cotton jersey, which is nice and beefy. I love a good cotton jersey. So, there you have it. That is uh, module one of my summer wardrobe. And I will do a little um, montage now of me wearing all 14 outfits. Uh, leave any questions or comments you have down below, and I will see you guys Friday. And I'm not exactly sure what the video is going to be Friday. Um, I also really went quickly. After my last video on last Friday, I want to say thank you to all the wonderful comments that everyone's been sending. Um, I was just, I'm just feeling very discombobulated. Um, I'm just not on a routine, and I'm one of those people that just really needs to be on a routine. But with my kids out of school, and there's been like, you know, we had the long weekend. We had Fourth of July this past week. And so it was a long holiday weekend because it was on Thursday. And so my husband was home from work all week uh, or all weekend, like a four day weekend. Um, and then nothing is on a normal routine. I've just been feeling very discombobulated, just very <laughs> like unorganized and disjointed. Um, and I'm glad that it's not coming across on the channel other than the fact that I keep talking about it. But I just wanted to say thank you for all the wonderful kind comments. You guys are just the best. So um, thank you. And again, if you have any questions on this uh, video, leave them down below. Um, thumbs up if you like the video, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and I will see you guys on Friday either with a plans video for module two of this, and it'll be the last of this little, um, and it'll be quick plans video, because again, I think I'm only making two things for it. Um, but it'll be either be that, or it'll be some jean making tutorials, so stay tuned for that. All right, I hope you guys have a great week, and I will see you on Friday. Bye!